Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we're going to learn how to build a question and answer bot using GPT index LangChain. This video has been coming for a long time. I got sick, so I could not make this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a very popular book in this case, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. We're going to take that book and then give it to GPT so that you can ask questions in the book, which um, the book, the bot will try to answer from the book. So we're going to build a Q&A bot, very simple, nothing sophisticated. We are not going to build a UI. I wanted to keep this video very simple so that we can focus on the actual concept of building a Q&A bot. Then probably if there is more interest, I can show sophisticated UI using Streamlit or Gradio in the future videos. But today, I'm going to simply take a book that is .txt file. A lot of people have been asking, like, let's say you are a company that you've got your own TXT or PDF. How can you build a bot on top of it? So that's exactly why I'm making this video. So you've got a TXT file, like a folder full of TXT file. So how can you give this folder to whatever code that we're going to build and then use that to ultimately build a bot where we can ask questions. So I'm going to show you a demo, a very quick demo. So I'm going to ask, uh, what is this book about? So, okay, let's first try to understand what is this book about? So it says, what do you want to ask the bot? And they said, what is this book about? And then it is going to actually get the answer. So it says, this book is about importance of living a life of contentment and purpose and how to achieve this by following the principles of art and adapting to the events that happen in life, blah, blah, blah. So I can ask more questions. I can, I can say, um, give me five points to live peacefully. And then it is going to actually take the book content and then it's going to find a place where this kind of content is there and then it is going to give me five points okay it has given me five points focus on focus on your own actions and decisions rather than worrying about what are those things so it, it has given me five points so this this is exactly what we are going to build so let me go long back and then give why we are building this and then give some more context first of all for us uh, to understand since chat gpt has been launched there has been an enormous amount of interest in the conversational ai bot space Everybody wants to build their own conversational agent. People want to see what is the point or part of life that they can automate, whether it is in your personal life, whether it is in your business life. If you particularly talk about a business life, then this is more uh, like closer to what customer support agents do in a lot of companies. So you ask a question, they reply, give you a reply and then you, they try to fix it for you. Um, like for example, I ordered something on Amazon. I got a wrong book. So I go to Amazon and then say, you know, I got a wrong book. They are going to tell me which order are you talking about? I select the order number. They're going to give me a return or they're going to give me some details. This is typically quite popular workflow in a lot of companies. Um, but for customer support agent to make a decision or give you a response, they need to be trained on something called SOP. SOP stands for standard operating procedure. In typical customer support workflow, you have something called standard operating procedure. So like that, if you've got a document where you've got knowledge base of your company or of your product documentation, how can you take the document? How can you take the .txt file and turn into a dot, like let's say a bot, like in this case, that could be a CLI bot, that could be a full-fledged UI based bot, like whatever that bot is. So for us to do that, we are going to leverage large language models, large language models, like in this particular case, models from OpenAI. But instead of directly going to OpenAI and then building something on top of it, we are going to use two very popular libraries, which I've covered already in a separate video called LangChain and GPT index. In this particular code, at least, we're going to use LangChain to access OpenAI models. And we're going to use GPT index to build an index, like build a vector search where we're going to take the document, convert it to some kind of embedding, store it, and then retrieve it. That's what we're going to do. And all we need is this Google Collab will have the entire code. So you will be able to get started immediately without any hassle, hopefully. Uh, I've tested this code multiple times, so this should ideally work without any issue. So I'm going to take you to the start of the code and then explain you what we are trying to do. First thing is we need to install the two popular libraries we just mentioned, which is GPT index LangChain. Once we have these two libraries installed, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to import from GPT index. We need to import the simple directory reader to read the folder and the GPT list index, GPT simple vector index, LLM predictor, prompt helper. From LangChain, we need to import OpenAI. That's primarily to connect to OpenAI. And uh, if you want to store this, whatever that we are going to build the index inside your Google Drive, or if you want to keep the files inside your Google Drive, then you can disable this code or uncomment this code and then use it. But in my case, I'm going to do everything collapse. So I've commented it. And finally, to set the environment variable, the key, 
Ideally, I'm showing you the key because I'm going to disable this key after the video is published. Ideally, you should not share a key with um, with whoever you're uh, showing. Like you, you cannot expose your secret token anywhere on the internet, anywhere in the world. So I'm going to just, I'm just that's why you set it up as an environment variable, especially if you're going to deploy it, it will be helpful. So yeah, that's why we're setting it as an environment variable. Now that we know what all the libraries that we need, our next thing is how are we going to get this key? Getting this key is going to be quite simple. Um, you go to OpenAI website, okay? When you go to OpenAI website, you are going to go log in first, like go to openai platform.openai.com. Then once you log in, you will read some homepage then click personal and then from there come to API keys. So click API keys. This is where you can create a new key. Like you can see that I've created a new key, which I can delete it. So go here, click create new secret key. And once you click create secret key, you can copy the key here. Make sure that you copy the key because copy and paste it somewhere. Like just don't copy it, leave it. Copy and paste it somewhere. Otherwise this key will not be accessible. Like if I click okay now, that's it. This key is not accessible now. I cannot see the key. I can delete it revoke it and then create a new key. That's what I'm going to do for this key as well. What I've shown in this video. So make sure you create a key, copy and paste it in whatever application that you're build, that you're building, um, add it as an environment variable if you are doing it on local machine. Another important thing that I think I should highlight at this point may be quite obvious for a lot of people is we do not need GPU for this thing. In fact, like on Google Colab, I'm not using GPU. Why? Because we are going to use large language model as an API call. You're not literally running this model on a GPU, so you don't need GPU. So this is, hence, this is quite helpful. Let's say you want to develop a mobile application. You want to develop a um, web application where you, you don't need GPU. You can still use it because all you're going to do is make a call to the OpenAI server, get things done. One is fine tuning. The second one is the inference where you are going to make a call and get it. So both will be done. The next thing is we need to now take the folder. So, okay, let's rewind back. We learned what are we doing. We learned what are the libraries we need. We learned how to get OpenAI API key. At this point, the next thing is we need to find a way to get the data that we need to use. So in my case, what I've done is I've gone to the MIT uh, classical, yeah, classics.mit.com, uh, mit.edu. I've got the book, The Meditations, written by Marcus Aurelius, and I've got this is this is written on 167 AC. So I've got this book. I've got this book and uh, the way I'm getting this book is by saying W get W get and then download the book. Like you can upload it. You can go to the folder, upload the .txt file if you want, like click upload here and do it. So it depends like whatever you want to do it, upload it. So you need to have a folder and you need to keep all the .txt, .txt files that you want to use or you want the model to learn. You want to keep all those things inside a folder and keep it. That's that's one thing. The next thing is now we have a folder. We have a folder full of .txt file, which is where exactly uh, the knowledge is there. And we want to build a knowledge bot based on this knowledge. So now we are going to build a helper function. We call it construct index and the function takes the directory path as an argument. What is the directory path with the, the folder where we have got all the .txt file. Now uh, there are certain parameters that we need to set because any large language model that we talk about, it has a context, um, like the length. Uh, so sometimes you need to chunk the text into multiple parts so that the large language model can consume it and then get it. So, so we're saying maximum input size should be 400 and 4096 tokens, number of output when it responds like 256, uh, chunk overlap, chunk size limit. We can see this in detail in the future videos, but right now let's go with the default parameters. The next thing is we need to create a prompt helper instance. So the prompt helper instance is going to use all these, all these, and then create the prompt helper instance. That's going to help us in, uh, you know, designing the prompt or taking the prompt based on the input text. The next thing is once we are done with the prompt, next thing is we need to define the large language model in itself. So what is the large language model you want to use? Um, La Langchain can actually support uh, open, open source models like models from Hugging Face as well. That means you don't have to only use OpenAI, which is a paid API. You can also use free open source models. But in this video, we're going to use OpenAI model. So here, uh, where we actually specify the large language model predictor, LLM predictor, here you have to specify the LLM in itself. And what is the LLM that we are using? We are using OpenAI. We are using the cheapest model in OpenAI. 
So it's not going to be as good as ChatGPT in this particular case because I'm using it for demo purpose. But when you are building it, you can probably use text da da vinci o o three. You can use text da vinci o o three. That's the most expensive one, also the most advanced one. But I'm using uh, the cheapest one. Like you, it's always a good practice to start with the cheapest one because you're going to make uh, you're going to pay for the number of tokens. Uh, so okay, that's another thing I need to cover. So the way you're going to be charged by opening is like when you give the input text for the first time, whatever tokens you have got that for that tokens tokens approximately you can say uh, one token is like two words one word half a word so somewhere in this range not necessarily two words yeah half a word or one word so for the number of tokens you are going to be charged so it's always important for you to keep in mind how much import input that you are giving so token cost optimization like uh, that is another totally different topic altogether um so that's some advanced prompt engineering technique how you can optimize cost but Talking about basics, I'm using the cheapest model. You can go to the OpenAI website and then see how much each model costs. I'm using the cheapest model just because it's a demo purpose. I also like I don't I don't find it actually bad. Like I got some decent results. But if you want to advance the model, you can use text down say O2, text down say O3, depending upon your use case. Now that's where you define the large language model itself. Now once you have the LLM predictor in place, next thing is. You want to use the simple directory reader which we imported before to take the directory and then load the data into something called documents. Like it has got a multiple dot txt file. You want to take everything and then put it inside documents. Now is when you're going to leverage GPT index completely because you're going to build something called a vector index. So you're going to use the documents. You're going to use the LLM that you just used with the prompt helper and build an index. So this is more like the embedding. So it's going to take everything. Um, learn from it, create an embedding and then store it as a dot JSON file. So that's what you have to do. Now that's dot JSON file. You can store it in disk, which means you can use it anytime you want. Like second time, let's say you want to ask a question to this bot, like five days later, 10 days later, you don't have to do the embedding process again, unless until you've got new content. So if you're a company, you want to build this for your company. Let's say in one year, you've got, let, let's say 20 documentation. So for the 20 documentation, when you build the dot JSON index, now next time you don't have to um, retrain it again because this for this 20 documents knowledge is already embedded inside the dot JSON file, like the vector index already has got it. Now, if you get additional documentation, let's say you went for a new product release, some vulnerability patch, then you are getting in new files for that. You can extract fine tune it and then you can combine it. That's again, totally different thing. But for whatever I've, you have already got that knowledge is going to be stored inside the index.json as a vector index. So we built a very simple vector index. At the end of this function, we're going to return the vector index into an object wherever you want. You can store it in index and then we are going to save it. So this is the first part of building a bot, like a GPT bot or Q&A bot. What is this first part called? This first part is called fine tuning or training embedding. So when you go to your OpenAI, uh, cost usage place, you can actually see that there are two kinds of usage. So you have one usage called model usage. You have second usage called fine tuned, fine tuned training usage. So one is when you make a request to the model and then get a response that's called model usage. The second, when you have text in place, you can fine tune it and that's what. So at the first point, what we have done is we have basically taken the text, fine tuned it or created an embedding. So it extracted the knowledge out of it and stored it in a numerical format. That's exactly what we finished doing. Now, the next thing is how do we take an input like which is an English in, uh, from the user in this case, English, and then use that information from the user and use the knowledge that we have got and then take the information reply back to the user. That's the second part. So the first part is creating this knowledge from empty text, which we have successfully done. And the second part, get the input from the user, which is most likely English. Now take this and then use your existing knowledge and then combine this and then reply back to the user with something relevant. Go ahead. Now, what are we going to do here? We are going to build a new function called ask bot. What is the input that the ask bot is going to take? So we're going to take the index.json file so that, you know, like in this current session, wherever you have got, you can use the index.json file. Now, very basic thing, just like we saved the index.json to disk, we can load it from disk using the given path. In our, in our case, the path is here. The default is index.json. 
So while it is true, we are going to run like an infinity loop. You, have, you can say, what do you want to ask the bot? Now you can take the query from the user, the English query, and the response mode is compact. Leave it out for now. Take the query, you create a response and use that response and get the response back. So there is a query. That query is sent to the index to query. You can see this is the user query. Whatever you type, that's a user query. You're using a method called query and that query is going to create a response back in return and that response is going to be displayed to the user finally. Very simple function, quite simple. Now this takes us to the end of our bot. If you want to build a UI on top of it, so this is where you have to use, like this is the part where you're going to build a UI on top because everything that happened before is actually, you know, behind the scenes, like creating embedding, storing the file, JSON file, storing the vector index, all these things are fine. Users are not going to care about, but this is where you will actually build a UI. Like I said, we are not going to build a UI. I wanted to keep this video simple. Now everything is done. So let's go ahead and then invoke the bot. So first thing that you need to do is you need to run this construct index and give the folder where the file is there. So in my case, the folder is in my current working directory. I can go here, copy the path, come back and give it. And because I want to give the entire directory, I can give. In your case, it could be different. So where you're using Linux, you're using Windows, you're using Mac, go find the folder where you have got all the .txt file, wherever it is, and mention that folder path here. Once you run this, it's going to take a couple of minutes. So because you're constructing the index and it also depends upon how large, how big your file is. Once that is done, the next thing is you can go now at this point in the same folder where what you have specified, you are going to also have a file called index.json and that index.json path is what you need to give. In my case, both are in the current directory. In your case, it could be completely different. Now index.json and then you can start asking questions. Let me run this and then I can ask. Um, I, I think I already asked what is meditation. Okay. Let's see what is meditation practice of focusing one's mind on a particular thought or activity in order to achieve a state of mental clarity and tranquility. I'm not sure if this is there, uh, where in the document that's okay. So what is meditation? So what, um, why am I always sad? I don't know if there's an answer for this in this book. But let's see if it can answer again. Um, we are using the cheapest model, so it shouldn't bother a lot. It's possible that you are feeling sad because you are not living in accordance with your nature. You may be feeling discontent with your current situation. Then it gives a long answer. How can I improve my life? So make you can actually make it conversational. You can keep context window. Um, we have already a different video using radio. I've already done so I can link that if you want. You can search for it. To improve your life, focus on being satisfied with what you have. Okay. I've got 23,000 subscribers. Should I be satisfied with that? Not sure. Act justly and benevolently and use reason and justice to make the most of the present moment. Be mindful of your thoughts and actions. Strive to be a part of the greater universe by connecting with the reason of our common nature. That's amazing. So this bot is quite good. So, and it works like you, as you can see, this bot actually works. It has used the knowledge that we built and based on that knowledge, because see the index, the index we loaded and index.query and then it is giving us the response that we want. That means we have reached the end of the video where we have successfully built a question and answer bot using the knowledge that we have got like, so this is like a knowledge bot using GPT index and Langchain leveraging open AI's large language models. And um, this is the core of it. A lot of people have been interested about it. A lot of people messaged me and asked me. So I'm sorry for the delay, but finally we have got it here. I link the documentation GPT index Langchain in the description. I link the Google Colab notebook in the description. Make sure you check it out. If you take this, what are the things that you need to do to use it for your, your own um, .txt file like knowledge? It's quite simple. First thing is keep your .txt or .txt files inside a folder. First thing. Second thing is add your own key. Third thing is install all the libraries. And I think then you're good to go. You, you All you have to do is run everything, construct the index, ask the bot uh, with the with the right path. And I think you should be able to keep this bot up and running without any issue. If you have any issue, let me know in the comment section. Happy to help if I know or if I can help. But otherwise, I hope this was quite helpful to you in building a knowledge bot, knowledge Q&A bot using GPT index and Langchain, leveraging open AI large language models. If you have any other question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Happy prompting. Thank you for watching.